Clue Network. To edify, to encourage, to upskill. This is Christian Life Upskill with Ifai of Hong Subscribe now. Hi, welcome to Clue, Christian Life Upskill. My name is Ifai Yukongwa. In this video, I want to be sharing very briefly with us on three things that we need to know about righteousness. As a Christian, the three things that you need to know about the righteousness that God has impacted to us now. The three things that we need to know. In my last video, I talked about, you know, I tried to introduce to us on the spirit of righteousness and I talked about righteousness as being the state of being right. The word in the Greek is the word dikaiosune. And what is dikaiosune? The state of being right in the eyes of God. I also explain it as the state of being innocent or one who is not guilty. So when you become righteous, you are not guilty. You are innocent before God. Hallelujah. And also to share, talk about, you know, the fact that we achieve righteousness in the Old Testament by the dictates of the law. They gave us scripture in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 24, 25. You know, but in the New, there's a way we become righteous and we become righteous through believing in Jesus. So Paul, right, talk in the book of Acts 13, verse 38. He says, through this Christ is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. He says, and all those who believe in me are justified from all things. They are declared not guilty from all things, which they couldn't under the law of Moses. So the law of Moses was, was able to justify men, but man could not meet the demand of that law. So in Christ, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, it is now made possible. So these are the things I shared in my last video. If you have not watched that video, I think you should or I encourage you to watch the video. Just the last video before this, and I believe it will bless you. But today, I just want to share very briefly on three things that we need to know about righteousness. And that the first thing that we need to know about righteousness is that righteousness, we cannot grow in righteousness. I cannot grow in righteousness, but I can grow in my understanding of righteousness. Righteousness is who I am now. I've been made righteous. I can't grow in it, but I can grow in my understanding. I can grow in my consciousness of righteousness. Hallelujah. And this is where renewing our mind comes in. Glory to God. This is where renewing our mind. Because if you don't know, you can't enjoy. You know, God was speaking through Hosea. I says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you don't know, you can't enjoy. So you'll be made righteous now. But you don't know. If you, you know, I, I was reading something years ago about the, the Second World War. Uh, and I read something about a particular soldier that went into hiding for over two decades, not knowing that the war had ended two decades ago. But he was still hiding because he did not know. So if you don't know what has been made available to you as a Christian, you can't enjoy it. So my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. So what do I do to begin to enjoy this? I, 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 in this position I'm in now, I learn, I enjoy it by renewing my mind. So Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore by the message of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Which is your reasonable service. And second one says, and be not trans conformed to this world, says, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. And also the book of Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians 22, it says that you put off concerning the old conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. John 24 says, and be you renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be you renewed. The word therefore renew is the word ananil, which means um, which gives us a picture of renovation. You know, somebody wants to renovate his house, he wants to take away the old furniture. You know, what does that mean? You take away the old furniture and replace with a new furniture, with a new set of furniture. So God is saying, start to renew your mind, replacing your programmings, the things you've learned over the years, with a new information now concerning the state you are now. 
So it's called rename. Since be not transformed to them, um, uh, not be, be not uh, conform to this world, but be transformed. The word therefore transform is the word metamorpho. You know, from where we get the word metamorphosis, which means transform to change from one state to another. He says, but this change comes in the place of renewing your mind. Hallelujah. So ananeo, which means to renovate. Hallelujah. To renovate, to take away and bring new new programs so you've got to do that on a consistent basis because that is the way the only way you can begin to enjoy the position that you are in right now so i can't grow in righteousness but i can grow in my understanding of the position of righteousness that i'm in now hallelujah very very important and the second thing that we need to understand about righteousness is that righteousness helps us in our place of prayer Without your righteous position, you cannot move anything in the realm of the spirit. It is because it's, when one is not righteous, he's a sinner. And when you're a sinner, you can't get answer in prayer. You can't even pray. The Bible says the prayers of the sinners are like abomination before God. So it is righteousness that is given to us as a gift. That is the only way that we can be able to stand before God in making a request in the place of prayer. You know, so James chapter 5, you read from 5, 15 and 16, it says, The effectual of having prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And the word, he used the word righteous, of a righteous man. So, who is the righteous man? It's simple. A righteous man is a man who has believed in Jesus, who has been impacted that state of righteousness, that gift of righteousness, who has been made right before God, who has been declared innocent, not guilty before God. He says, The prayer of such a man. Is, it avails so much. The word for therefore avail is the word is cause. Is cause means to be forceful. Hallelujah. Is cause means for something to be forceful. He says when the righteous man prays, it is forceful. But first that man must know that he's righteous. So you must know that you're righteous. Hallelujah. And you must know. And with that knowledge gives you that position to come boldly and make righteous demand. You know, we saw the ministry of Jesus when he prayed. You, you, could see, you could know that Jesus prayed from that righteous well, Every time he prayed, you know, you, there's no ambiguity about his position with God. You, you, when Jesus talks, you can tell his position with God is righteous. When he prays, you can tell his position. You know, at the tomb of Lazarus, we saw the way he prayed. Powerful prayer. Father, I thank you because I know you have heard me. Father, I thank you because you hear me always. You see, but before, because of these people that are standing here, I say this so that they might know that you sent me. Imagine the way he was praying. Thank you because you hear me always. Thank you because you have heard me. Now, he hasn't prayed that Lazarus will come from the dead. But he says, thank you because you have, because you always hear me. Hallelujah. You could see his position when he's praying. You could see, he, he, you know, the mental disposition, the, the way he places himself, the, the position he knows he has with God. What position do you know you have with God? It's always going to tell when you pray. It's always going to tell when you pray. Hallelujah. It's always going to tell when you pray. Jesus prayed with so much confidence. Thank you because you heard me. Thank you because you hear me always. But because of these people who are here, I'm saying this. So that they will know that you have sent me. Then he declared, Lazarus, come forth. Glory to God. He prayed from that position. We also saw with Elijah. Elijah prayed simple prayer. Simple prayer. Hear me, O oh Lord, that people will know that I'm doing this because of you. And suddenly fire came from heaven. Why? Because, you, you see, these men understood their position. Those men in the Old Testament understood their position. You know, um, um, Joshua asked his son to stand still. And Bible says, never has man honored the words of men like he did to Joshua. Why? Because Joshua was righteous. So if you understand your position as a righteous man, you can make righteous demand. You can demand in your family that death will stop. You can de demand in your family that late, late marriages will stop. You can demand in your family that divorce will stop. You, you as a man, Bible says Elijah was a man. He wasn't a community. Just one man prayed and he didn't read for three years and a half. One man with God. One man. So you as a man can change anything. You, you know, I, 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 I'm reading a book by a, a, an intercessor called Rhys Howells. He's a British man. And now he changed the ties during the Second World War. And now I just, I was just, you know, reading and meditating. How just one man can change history? Rhys Howells. Just one man can change the course of history 
because he understands his position as a man of prayer. So you also, you know, the, the, the story of um, um, a man called George Muller, you know, that run an orphanage home, a British man. Last year I read about this about a biography, and I was so blessed as the way this will pray. Never tells any more anybody about the need of the orphanage. Only prays to God, and miraculously, God has a way of bringing those things in it. Why? He understands his position as a righteous man. So you understanding first of all, I talk about the, the place of understanding our position as a righteous man. If you understand your position as a righteous man, you can make righteous demand. In my family, no more late marriages. In my family, no more divorce. In my family, this sickness will stop. In my family, this sugar diabetes will stop. You can start making righteous demand. And as you begin to make this righteous demand, it's going to, you're going to bring force from the realm of the Spirit. And you're going to see heaven back your prayer. He backed Jesus. He backed Paul. He backed Elijah. It will back you. All you need to do is to understand your position. Glory to God. So there is no ambiguity about this. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, you confess his lordship over your life, you are righteous. Period. And you can make righteous demand. You can say for things to happen and they will happen that way. You can command that thing to stop. You can command that mishap in your family to stop. You can command that poverty in your family to end. And you see it that way. Why? Because you're a righteous man. So the first, I talked about the place of us not going in righteousness but going in our understanding of the righteous position that God has put us and also the place of righteous or understanding our place of righteousness in getting answers in the place of prayer hallelujah and then the thought that I'm going to be talking about is that our state of righteousness should also reflect in our behaviors <laughs> very very important you know it, that is where some of this thing comes to where people live you know our sins are be forgiven. So what's the point? If your knowledge of righteousness is not making you to do the wrong things, then we will begin to doubt your salvation. You see, because your knowledge of righteousness should make you to live right, should make you to live better, should make you to be conscious. Hallelujah. Should make you to be conscious. Should make you to, to, to live by examples. Glory to God. So you shouldn't be that Christian that people are now pointing that it's not being shame to the body no so my righteous position my understanding of righteousness should help me to live better glory to god when the bible was talking paul writing says that you have been baptized into christ baptized means you have been immersed into christ and we've been immersed into christ and brought out means that when people see us they should see christ hallelujah when people see you who they should see is christ so if people are not seeing Christ in you, it's a problem. So you don't live like Samson. It's because when I shake myself as of the other time, power will come. So I now live carelessly. No, that is not how God wants us to live. He wants us to live so badly. Glory to God. He wants us to live knowing that we're supposed to be good examples, you know, as a righteous man. Hallelujah. You know, we are righteous. But there's also something that is called the fruit of righteousness. We see it in the book of Galatians chapter 5. You know, peace, love, meekness, long suffering, patience. Those are the fruit of righteousness. So you must also learn to exhibit those fruit. Now you've been made righteous, but exhibit those fruit of righteousness. You know, John was John the Baptist was talking about was talking to the Jews in the book of Luke chapter 3, a very interesting story. When they came for him to be baptized, he says, and he said unto them, when he saw the multitude that came forth to be baptized. He says, you generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath of God that was to come? And the next verse says, bring forth therefore fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, you, have, you said you have repented, but I want to see fruit. So if you say you are righteous, we should see fruit. Hallelujah. So I talked about the place of us understanding our righteous position, the place of us making righteous demand because of position we have now and also the place of living a righteous life fruit of righteousness they say fruit meant for repentance like john says so those fruit also it is important that we bear them hallelujah so these are the things i want to share with us in this video to understand yes i've been made righteous but i also must live righteous Hallelujah. I shouldn't be a stumbling block. My understanding of righteousness should no longer be a stumbling block to somebody else. Yes, Jesus has taken away my sin. I'm righteous. I enjoy complete forgiveness, continuous forgiveness. But that does not mean that I have to live recklessly. There's a lifestyle of 
holiness, that's a lifestyle of righteousness that's suspected of me now. Because you know, it, it, a lot of people push some of these teachings and they want to live lasciviously. No, we have not been called to live lasciviously. We have been called to live righteous, holy before God. Hallelujah. And these are the things I want to be sharing with us in this video. And I believe that as we begin to you know, learn these things and bring them into our consciousness, we are going to grow and get better and produce better results in our work with God. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much for taking our time to watch this video. Now please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would please encourage you to subscribe to my channel, to like, to turn on the post notification, and to share with friends. Until I see you in my next video, thank you so very much, and God bless you. Shalom.